Uh, I've been to Disneyland and I hated it. <laughs> you hate Disneyland? I hate Disneyland. I'm I'm not a big <laughs> Disney fan. How does anyone hate Disneyland? It's the happiest place on earth. No, it's not. Hello, Ben. Hey, Abe. Now you had quite a holiday. I did. Yeah, I uh, recently. I, I flew across Japan to the uh, the city of Nagoya. Well, tell us about the trip. Why did you go to Nagoya? It was my middle son's fourth birthday, and we gave him a choice, Disneyland or Legoland, and he chose Disneyland. (laughs) But then he changed his mind, luckily, (sighs) thankfully, and uh, we went to Legoland in the end. Why do you say luckily and thankfully? Is Legoland much less expensive than Disneyland? Well, number one, uh, I've been to Disneyland and I hated it. <laughs> you hate Disneyland? I hate Disneyland. I'm I'm not a big <laughs> Disney fan. How does anyone hate Disneyland? It's the happiest place on earth. No, it's not. It's super expensive. Um, yeah. It's super busy. Uh, yeah. there's no alcohol there. They don't serve alcohol. I think that's changed recently, but when I was there. Alcohol is served at Disney Sea. Yeah. But right. Disneyland doesn't serve alcohol. That's yeah. what I heard. Right. And uh, yeah. the worst point, it's full of dirty, sticky little children I uh, hate Disneyland, so he chose Legoland, and Legoland is in Nagoya. It's about 30 minutes out of the city, kind of in an industrial area. We spent the first night of a two-night trip uh, at the Legoland Hotel. Oh, wow. You booked the Legoland Hotel. That must have been quite expensive. It was a little bit pricey. I'm broke now. Well, Ben, you know... Almost everyone listening has probably been to Disneyland. Right. But I doubt many people have been to Legoland, including myself. Sure. So tell us about Legoland, man. Well, the hotel, uh, for starters, the Lego hotel was amazing. Uh, Everything's made of Lego. There are huge sort of buckets of Lego to play with. Uh, everywhere Um, like the front desk is made of lego and our room was a pirate wait wait wait. pirate lego theme wait hold on did you say the front desk is made of lego yeah everything's lego the signs lego uh, but but like small legos or are these like giant lego blocks well both all kinds they've gone to a lot of effort and time to uh to make things out of normal size Lego blocks. It's incredible. Wow. No, it's amazing. Super cool. Worth paying the extra money for the hotel experience if you have kids. Uh because we stayed in a pirate themed room. Uh the bed was like a pirate bed. The oh, kids cool. had their own their own treasure sort of room area. It was really awesome. It was really wow. well done. Yeah. Great design. Five stars for the Lego Hotel. The staff were amazing, and uh, and then we went into Legoland on the next day, and it was it was amazing. Uh, look, I'll say this: Disneyland and USJ are sprawling places. They're huge. Uh, it's exhausting walking around. Sprawling. That means really big and wide. Too big. Taking you probably need a lot of a. Of taking up a huge area, sprawling. Sprawling. You probably need at least two days to, to see Disneyland or USJ uh, properly, completely. 
But Legoland, uh, very compact, very manageable, doable in one day. Great for small kids. Lots of nostalgic kind of exhibits and areas for adults. Um, really great. Plus, we went on a uh, on a winter's Tuesday. Ah, uh, smart. And there was almost nobody there. Ah, uh, that's very smart. You went on yeah. a a weekday in the winter time. Yeah, it so was a you gray have sky. To put up with some cold weather, but oh, you don't have to wait in line all day. Zero waiting. Oh, that's awesome. We got we literally got to ride every almost every attraction there. And it's uh it's kind of designed for younger kids. So highly recommend it for younger kids. Parents, uh, you know, have yourself a few overpriced beers and enjoy Legoland. Were your kids well behaved? Oh, they were great. They look, the kids were just in awe of the place. In awe. They were like, this is awesome. Awesome. Just running from one thing to another. And so were we. It was, uh, it was yeah, it was super cool. Legoland, five stars from, uh, from old Space Dragon. And the second night, we stayed in a, in a hotel in central Nagoya. And we stayed in a, a re- you know, a pretty, no- you know, sort of decent, decent hotel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One level sort of above a business hotel with a decent sized room. Nice. And we were sharing the hotel with the women's world championship table tennis athletes. Like from all over the world? Yeah. The ping pong girls? <laughs> yeah, ping pong girls. So in Nagoya at the time, the city was hosting the the Women's World Table Ch- Tennis Championships. And all the athletes were staying at our hotel. Wow. So in the morning, I was uh, enjoying a lovely hotel breakfast, which is my favorite thing ever. What, the hotel buffet-style oh, breakfast? Oh, I, I, I love it. I, I love a hotel breakfast. So I was enjoying a breakfast, choosing my croissants and my strawberries and my, ooh, my uh, creamy coffee. And I saw all these like Swedish and American and uh, some African and Asian ladies table tennis players. And you know what, Abe? What? They were all hot. They're all pretty. They're all gorgeous. Really? I didn't know this about table tennis players. I thought, you know, everyone thinks, oh, volleyball girls are sexy and the stereotypes. But table tennis girls are hot. Wow. Yeah. So so you, you had this huge group of attractive young women from all around the world. Yeah. And you were like, hey, uh, well, well, do you, <laughs> do hey, you want oh. some extra jam on your croissant? I mean, hey, uh, ladies, do you want to hear about the history of Lego? Yeah. You guys uh, like Lego? <laughs> <laughs> I got a couple spaceships in my room. Have you guys been to Legoland? It's great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Five stars. Oh, don't miss it while you're here. <laughs> Ladies, anyone? Who's this weird old guy trying to talk to us about Lego? And I told my wife, look at these ladies. They're pretty sexy, don't you think? And uh, my wife was not impressed. But I was. So, um, Wait, you asked your wife her opinion? You said, hey. Yeah. Well, I said, hey. Up, I mean, look at look- these Hot These ladies, girls, don't you think they're hot too? Because I thought, you know what? I <laughs> thought so I had this idea that table tennis is one of the sports, one of the rare sports where you can be fat and successful at it. No way. Yeah, I know. I'm kind of wrong there, but I know. They move? They're like, I know. I know. I know they're like that. I know they're like Jackie Chan's, but still. Um, I still put table tennis in that category of sport, like darts and golf. Yeah. 
I see what you mean. Table tennis is kind of more like just a game. Same yeah. with darts. It's a bar game. It's, it's just kind of a game. It's like billiards. But when you see high-level table tennis, then you think, oh, okay, no, this is definitely a sport. Yeah. Were they carrying around, like, table tennis paddles and, you know... No. Were they no constantly paddles. practicing, like... No paddles. Sitting at dinner... <laughs> yeah, right. They're just bouncing it off their Yeah, their like, how forehead. did you know they were table tennis players? Because they had their team jackets on. Oh. Yeah. And, and you know, this is part of it. At breakfast, they were wearing, like, tiny little, little tight little sports pants. And uh, I thought, you What do you mean you sports pants? I don't do you know, mean like, shorts? Yeah, tight little, like, yoga shorts or something. I don't know what you call them. You Hot mean pants? Just like tight shorts. I don't know what to call them. Lycra shorts. Yeah. And, you know, you don't... Re- I, th- I think you don't really need those shorts for table tennis. I don't know. Um, what do you mean? I, they're too sexy for table yeah, tennis? I fi- yeah, I felt they were too sexy for table tennis, I, I think. You thought, like, do you need to uh, wear such tight short shorts and make old space dragon so excited <laughs> while he's trying to enjoy his creamy coffee and his hot croissant <laughs> oh, oh, i'm trying to oh. i'm trying to have a croissant and a coffee and talk about lego with my wife over here i don't need a swedish table tennis girl shaking her tight little shorts in my in my face all right I don't think anyone shook their shorts in your face, Ben. They're always trying to ping my pong, if you know what I mean. No, I don't. No. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> ping my uh <laughs> ping my penis. So what was your wife scolding you to stop staring no, at No, she wasn't scolding me. She wasn't scolding me. My um my wife knows I'm a uh I'm a bit of a social uh, commentator. So you look around and you yeah. talk about the people that you see. I look around. I, I make my comments. Uh, and she she tells me if she agrees or disagrees. That's pretty much how it goes when we're in public. Uh, but she didn't I say, look get at that. angry. I say, look at, that. <laughs> look at that guy. Look at that dog. Doesn't that look weird so to you? You're like, look at, look at all these <laughs> tennis players. Tight shorts and they're... They're hot bodies. Look at them. They're trying to steal me, honey. <laughs> They're trying to break our marriage up. But don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. I got my eyes on the ball. I don't need no ping pongs. It's only you, baby. Okay. Well, any any other interesting things happen in no, Nagoya? I mean, that was pretty much it. Um my son lost his Switch. He left it in the hotel, his Nintendo Switch. That kind of sucked. Oh, I do that all the time. It's easy. You call the hotel. You say, I left it. Please send it to me. You pay about a 1,000 yen for a cash-on delivery, you know, delivery. And, you know, you get it like one or two yeah. days later. You I've did. done that. Probably 20 times. You've left a lot of things in hotel rooms. Well, I I used to travel a lot for work. Right. And, you know, I'm a pretty forgetful guy. Sure. My glasses. Usually it's my glasses. Because I put in my contact lenses and then who needs glasses? Forget all about them. That's why. I see, fine. I don't need glasses anymore. (laughs) I'm cured. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And then that night, I take out my contacts, and I'm like, oh, fuck, where are my glasses? Oh, no, they're at the hotel. About a 1,000 yen. They send me my glasses. Yeah, they, uh, they did send it next day delivery. So you made it home safe and sound. We did. Safe and sound. All right. All right. Well, let's move on, Ben. Okay. I believe we have 
a question. Here we go. If you've got a question. Ben, you got a question. Uh, freak and or weirdo from Instagram, right? Oh, this is uh, both, actually. This person is a very freaky weirdo. Ooh, a freaky weirdo. I'll call them Lady K. Lady K, a freaky weirdo. Maybe, uh, maybe Mr. K, but I think it was a lady. When I was reading the message, I was uh, imagining a beautiful lady. In the hot, tight. Table tennis shorts. Lady K said, Hey, Ben and Abe, love the podcast. Number one. Thanks, Lady K. La- Can't... Ma- maybe Lady K. Maybe Mr. K. Yeah, no, definitely a hot, sexy lady. You want to believe it's a hot, sexy lady. So let's just, let's just play along with Ben's fantasy. Lady K. Lady K. All right. Sexy, available, Lady K. Okay. okay. She needs to know. She said, Ben and Abe, ha ha, funny podcast, but what's happening in Australia? What's happening with the animal attacks? She's uh, asking for an animal attack update. Oh, she's asking you if there have been attacks recently. Perhaps she's wondering why recently we haven't talked about animal attacks. Uh, shall we play the animal music? You know what? Play it. Play it in memory of the, the hundreds who have died uh, since we last did this. Animals, so cute. So cute. Kangaroos and kookaburras. Koalas, wombats, kookaburras. Tiny bilbies, tiny bilbies, wallabies, quackers, wallabies, cute animals. Uh oh, here come the bad boys. No! So, Lady K's question is, how come we haven't heard news about deadly Australian animals recently? The answer is because Ben's too lazy to find the crazy animal stories. (laughs) Shut up, Abe. That's not true. Since you got this question, did you go and find some stories? Of course I did, because unlike you, Abe, I'm a gentleman, and uh, I would never keep a lady waiting. All right, Ben, tell us a crazy animal attack story from Australia. It's been a while. And we're going to fly to Darwin in the far north. Darwin is the northern territory. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, very remote. It's very, very isolated. Very isolated. Like it's very far from everything. Hot, tropical place. And there's a man there. He's a strong farmer. He's a cattle farmer. Raising cattle, cows. Yep. And uh, everyone says he's one of the strongest men in, uh, in the area. Okay, so he's known to be a kind of a macho, strong guy. Big, strong muscles, uh, not scared of anything. Confident Australian man. Yeah. You'd probably love him, Abe. He'd probably pick you up and carry you to bed and put you down in your bed and uh, kiss you goodnight. Sounds great. (laughs) So, so, So he was walking on the farm and uh, <laughs> you <laughs> you walk he walked by a pond. He said it was dirty water. Okay, so it's just yeah. like a swampy big puddle. 
Right. But he saw he saw some fish flapping around, just jumping around in it. Uh, so we, he went down to the pond, big mistake, an 11-foot saltwater crocodile jumped out. 11 foot, that is three and a half meters. That's a big boy. He called it a big bastard. A big bastard it, crocodile, mate. He said, he said the big bastard, he, ca- he came up, he grabbed me, he grabbed my right foot, and he shook me like a rag doll. Sounds weird, because crocodiles have very small hands. So, mm. seems like, you know... Tiny little hand grabbing his foot. It's like no, 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 no. Who cares? The crocodile. No, the crocodile bit his foot. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. He's gonna grab. He's not shaking. He's not shaking hands with the crocodile. You said the crocodile Abe. grabbed him. Yeah, with his with his mouth. He bit him. <laughs> you meant to say the crocodile bit his foot and started shaking him. Crocodiles don't grab with their hands. All right, the hands, the, they're not hands, they're feet. They're for walking. That's all they do with them. Okay, okay, okay. So this crocodile grabbed him and pulled him into the water and started shaking him like a doll. Scared uh, for his life, he bit the crocodile <laughs> above the crocodile's eye, and he said, it felt like leather in my mouth. So he he leaned down. yeah. And he thought, hey, you bite me, or oh, I'll bite I'll you bite too. You. And he, he... Have a taste of your own medicine. So I guess yeah. he tried to bite the crocodile's eye, thinking that would be a, like a weak spot. Yeah, well, he did. He bit the crocodile, and the crocodile let go, and uh, he was able to escape. Um, wow. So, yeah, and he... Uh, he survived. He drove himself to the hospital. When he was in hospital, he thought back on the attack. And he said, you know what? I've got to change my life. I've been walking around swamp country, fixing fences, and I'm sick of it. And uh, this crocodile attack has opened my eyes. Uh, because he's a cattle farmer... Yeah. So a lot of his job is making sure that the the fences are secure. Right. And he says every day my life is just fixing fences. And uh and now this this crocodile almost killed me. I had a near death experience mm-hmm. and it's opened my eyes and uh oh. I need to live I need to start living my life. God damn it. Wow. Okay, so what changes did he make to his life after that? Uh, I don't know. We don't know. Um, oh. There was never a uh, never so a follow up. So he's probably up. still doing the same. <laughs> I'm thing. sure. I'm sure he's still but fixing fences. He's thinking but about changing. At least his it, life. You know what? It made him think. Think about it. Uh, you know, and, hmm. I'm a strong believer that the first step to change yeah. is saying it out loud to the world. Oh, okay. Me too. Even I've got if a similar. No one's listening. Just saying the words that are in the back of your mind that you want to change, it somehow becomes more real. Even That's, if no one hears it, just saying it, like putting it out into the physical world. Yeah. So good for you, cattle farmer guy. That's weird because I've got a similar similar saying. Um, I often say uh, change comes from within, from inside. How is that similar? (laughs) (laughs) What the fuck are you talking about? It wasn't that similar at all. Anyway, fucking hell. So he's going to change his life, maybe. Right. There's good advice we can all take from this story. If you're uh, getting attacked by a crocodile... Bite it, yeah. Anything's anything's okay. You can bite, you can scratch. 
whatever you need to do and get away from that uh, that beast. The lesson of the story is if you get bit by a crocodile, just bite him right back. Yeah. Or hopefully, like, try to bite, like, right, like, their eye kind of area. Yeah. Then they might get scared and let you go. Try and put your finger inside his ass. That's another one. No, another good tip. no. You maybe I think the eyes are a good thing to attack. Yeah, eyes and ass. Ben, no, no. Get in that animal's ass. All right. So uh, animal attacks are happening in Australia. They're constant. They're daily. No one's dying though, and. If a crocodile bites you, all you got to do is bite him back and you're safe. So, sure. Yeah. Um, Not that dangerous. The crocodile bit him. He bit the crocodile back. And thanks to this experience, now he's motivated to change his life for the better. So, thank you, crocodile. No, he shouldn't. Thank you, all the dangerous animals in Australia. No. You're not that dangerous. You're not from Australia. You don't know. He shouldn't have to change his life. He wasn't happy fixing fences all day, so now maybe he'll find a job where he's more happy. So thank you, Crocodile. Helping okay. people as always. I guess in that way, uh, the Crocodile uh, <laughs> crocodile did, did help in this, okay, in this one case. I'll give you that. Oh, Oh, Ben, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we say goodbye, I just want to give a quick shout out to someone who left us a five star review on Apple Podcasts. Yay! On December 8th, Mieko wrote, I love listening to you guys talking. That's so funny and so cool. And the title is I Love This Podcast. Five stars. Bling, 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 bling. Hell yeah. Bling. Thank you, Mieko. Thanks, Mieko. Do as she does. Five stars, guys. It really helps. We really appreciate it. Come to Apple Podcasts and, and please do take just a minute to actually write a little comment and, and uh, get in touch with us on social media. Uh, I'm on X. Ben is on Instagram. Uh, send us a comment. Send us your question, especially. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. Have a wonderful week, and we will see you soon. Yeah.